I'm delighted to welcome you to today's webinar on how to boost your international sales overseas, featuring tips from Queen's Award winning companies and UK export finance. My name is William Barnes Graham and I am the Digital Content Manager at Open to Export. We are an online community helping small UK businesses get ready to sell overseas through our step-by-step -step articles and guides, regular webinars, Ask the Experts Forum, and our Export Action Plan tool. You can find all of these on our website at www.opentoexport.com. Open to Export is powered by the Institute of Export and International Trade, the UK's only professional membership body for international trade, offering a unique range of individual businesses, business membership benefits, education and training catering for beginners through to master's degree, and an always exciting and prestigious programme of events celebrating UK businesses' exporting achievements. We will be running a live Q&A at the end of the session, and you can ask questions at any point during this webinar using the question box on the control panel to the right-hand side of your screen. We have four great speakers today who will introduce themselves shortly. Kicking things off, we'll have Sam Hoekster from UK Export Finance, who will be introducing some of the great work they do helping UK businesses get off the ground overseas. We'll then hear from two winners of the Queen's Award for Enterprise um, and applications are once again open for that this, summer, this autumn. We'll first hear from Dave Macy from Payment Industry Leaders ICC Solutions and we'll then hear from Arnaud, Arnaud de Montiel from London jewelry maker Mercy Mama. And then to tell us a little bit more about the awards, we'll also have Craig Wilson from the Queen's Award team. But first to kick things off, over to you Sam. Thank you, William. Um, welcome all to the, uh, the webinar. My name is Sam Hoxter. I work in the International Business Development Division at UK Export Finance in London. Um, I am here to do a whistle-stop tour through UK Export Finance. I, I, I promise and have been instructed not to take more than 10 minutes. Um, but it is my pleasure to, to talk you through our department. Um, William. And if you could kindly go to the slide headed about UK export finance and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, what, what is UK export finance? We're actually the UK government's export credit agency. What's an export credit agency? Well, we were actually the first one to be established back in 1919. Our mandate is to essentially support you, UK exporters, in winning business overseas. By UK exporter, by the way, I don't mean you have to be a UK owned company, you just have to be a company uh, with, with operations in the UK from which you export. Uh, we sit within the Department of International Trade. The Department of International Trade colleagues that we have will help you um, with opportunities overseas. Where our role comes in is where there are opportunities overseas is to help you finance them. As we put in the slide, we are the government um, and we work with the private sector. We're not allowed to compete with the private sector, but we will fill the holes. We hope that uh, the private sector leave us. But as, as I'll explain, we actually work um, in, in most respects with the private sector. Uh, next slide, please, William. Uh, I've hinted at our mission. Um, our mission is to ensure that no viable UK export fails for lack of finance or insurance from the private sector while operating at no net cost to the taxpayer. We're not here to make a profit, nor are we here to make taxpayers lose money. We're here to help UK companies earn profits, win business, create jobs, pay taxes, etc. How do we help companies? Well, we've categorised this into, into three areas, really. We help them win export contracts. Once those export contracts are won, we help them fulfill them. And where there are any concerns about being paid, we, we will help companies there as well. I'll touch on what I mean by guarantees, insurance and loans. Um, first category, win contracts. What do I mean by this? Well, if you can imagine an example, you are a manufacturer of X-ray machines. Uh, you are looking to provide x-ray machines to a hospital in Mexico. Um, that hospital in Mexico might have its own cash, 
uh, it might not have its own cash. It might have its own cash, but it will prefer to incur debt to pay for any products or services that it imports. What I mean by win exports is that you, the exporter, with your fantastic product or service, we support both products and services, can go to that Mexican hospital and say, if you are willing um, to pay for me to provide you with those x-ray machines and you like the quality that I provide, I can help you sweeten that deal by actually bringing finance with it. So you can use finance with the UK government support to pay for that export contract. There's not enough time to go into, into those products and obviously subsequently I'll be very happy to talk to those who are interested, but essentially that finance comes in two elements. Banks might be willing to lend to that Mexican hospital to pay for your contract with that hospital. Banks might charge that hospital a certain interest rate fixed by their, their uh, assessment of the risk of that Mexican hospital. I can't, I can't tell you what that rate is, I don't know. Where the UK government comes in is we will guarantee to those banks lending to the Mexican hospital that if there's any default when they lend to that Mexican hospital, then we, as the government, will actually guarantee the banks for that default. What that means is that the, the, the banks are lending with the UK government guarantee. And the UK government guarantee will bring a reduced interest rate. It will bring a reduced interest rate because it's the UK government risk. It therefore makes the export contract that you're offering much more attractive. Similarly, we actually don't act as a guarantor, we can act as a lender. So in the same example, we might be able to lend to that Mexican hospital so that it can then borrow uh, to pay for your contract. It's a great deal for the Mexican hospital uh, because they will be charged a reduced interest rate and they will have a number of years to pay back that loan. Next slide. You might have already, without UK government assistance, um, have already uh, secured a contract. Um, what you might be facing, though, is uh, a, a worry about how you actually fund yourselves to deliver on that contract. We have a couple of products which we can help you with here, and these products are done with banks. So my advice here is to work with the banks on these products, and, and we have an arrangement with the banks that we will work with them. What are those products? Well, there are a couple I've included here. Um, there's the Export Working Capital Scheme. As, a, as an SME, even an MSB, whatever size, you might be strapped for cash. You might have to pay third parties in order to be able to deliver uh, on that export contract that you've just won. Um, where there are any pinch points in your cash flow, we can help. We help by working with your house bank or whoever bank you choose to work with work for under our scheme, such that the bank might be willing to provide you that working capital loan to help you with that pinch point. And it might be willing to do that because it knows that we, the UK government, can guarantee up to 80% of that working capital loan. So that, that is a method of banks providing the working capital loan, but us, UKF, guaranteeing those banks up to 80% to um, alleviate any concerns the banks might have in lending to you. Another example, um, you, as many of you will be aware, might be required to provide performance guarantees um, on some of the contracts that you've just won. Performance guarantees uh, are provided by banks. Banks, in order to provide that guarantee, will require cash to be set aside or some form of collateral, which obviously again affects your cash flow. We can help there. We help there by actually, instead of banks stipulating the setting aside of collateral cash, we can actually guarantee banks up to 80% of that risk. Next slide, please. So I've touched on how we can help you win contracts by bringing finance. I've touched on how we can help you actually um, fund yourselves when delivering on those contracts. You might have a third concern, uh, and I'm sure some of you might have experienced this already, which is concerns with uh, an existing client or, or, or a new client uh, on payment risk. Uh, it might be a market, it might be a country in which you're worried about. Where you've approached the private market and they're not able to help with you uh, in, in, offering, in offering insurance, that we, then we, UKEF, can look to do that instead. 
it's an insurance policy essentially. It would insure you up to 95% of your contracts such that if there is a payment default by your overseas client, um, then we will step in and make you whole instead. Again, it needs to be tied to a particular UK export contract. Uh, somewhat similarly, um, you might have provided a bond, as, as I explained earlier, uh, but that bond might be unfairly called by your client, or it might have been called for political reasons in that country in which you're looking to do business. We can help there by protecting you on that calling of the, of the bond with a policy. Next slide, please, William. So um, we, we've actually already helped uh, a number of you already, a number of Queen's Award winners. Um, and if, if on, on the next slides, what I'll do is just touch on some case studies. So it just gives you a flavor um, of, of the kind of things that we've, we've done to support. The first one um, was a company called Supercat. Um, I won't read out the slide to you, but essentially it was a, a manufacturing company um, providing military vehicles to, to the Australian um, Defence Force. Um, it received an advance payment, which helped it with its working capital, uh, but by return, the Australian client was asking for an advance payment guarantee in case, of course, um, Supercat did not deliver um, as required and, wanted, and thereby the Australians wanted their money back. We can help here again, the same logic applies. The bank will otherwise want to trap cash or insist on collateral. We can help work with you and the bank by ensuring the bank does not require that cash to be trapped and you can keep that working capital you've um, received through that advance payment. Um, and, and we will help with an advance payment uh, guaranteed bond. Again, um, the first port of call here is your bank. Uh, the banks will have an established arrangement with us um, in terms of how we work with them. Next slide, please. MR Solutions, a Guildford-based company, um, won a contract, again in Australia, with, with Sydney um, University. Um, we helped here with uh, the working capital support that I provided, up to 80% um, guarantee. Next slide. Uh, PJ Valves, um, a huge exporter, up to 90% in fact of its uh, turnover comes from overseas um, sales. We were here, we were able to um, work with them on the on the bond support scheme. Uh, again, on the on the performance bonds uh, I touched on. There is no there is no maximum size on 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 the working capital and, and, and the bonds. Um, our rules and regs are available on our, on our website, um, but there must be an export contract. And by export contract, there must be at least 20% of that export contract coming from the UK. Uh, obviously, that's where we look to connect the finance that we offer with, with the service and the product that you, you're providing. You, you are our minimum 20%, in other words. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, another example um, of uh, a company in the aluminium industry. Uh, again, it was uh, this time an advance payment guarantee required. Uh, I've explained how that that works, um, and we and we were very happy to help on uh, an almost twenty-six million dollar uh, contract here. So I hope with these case studies you have somewhat of a flavour of how some of these some of these products could work. Um, Next and hopefully final slide, please, William. Penultimate slide, I should say. Um, I suspect you're all based um, around the country. What, what we have are colleagues based uh, near you. Um, I've listed the names and the regions here in which they're based. If you go onto our website, you will find their contact details. They are specialists in the short term trade solution products uh, I've just explained, the working capital performance bonds, uh, export insurance policy, etc. They will also be able to explain how uh, our financing overseas works, where I, where I explained where we look uh, for you to win contracts by bringing finance. So my advice is if you're interested and you need our help, please, please contact our colleagues, the export finance managers as listed below. 
And I believe the next is our, is our final slide where we, we just listed some of the um, resources available. Um, more can be found at ukexportfinance.gov.uk. Uh, and with that, I'll uh, hand it back to William. Cool, thank you. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Dave Macy at ICC Solutions, one of the Queen's Award winners. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Dave Macy, the CEO of ICC Solutions. Uh, next slide, please, Will. ICC Solutions was incorporated in 1996, and we provide test tools to the global payments industry for chip and pin, contactless, and mobile phone payments. Our centre of excellence is based in Cheshire, where we employ around 50 staff. We started international trade at a very early stage in our business, and now we export to over 60 countries, with 95% of our turnover being international. The US, Canada, and China are our largest markets. We were deeply honoured to win our fourth Queen's Award this year for innovation. This was our second innovation award, also having received two international trade awards. We've been recognized as an export champion by the Commonwealth First Project and also by the DIT. Our commitment to international trade is further reflected by our membership of the Institute of Export, of which I'm also a trustee director. Next slide, please. So why did we apply for a Queen's Award? Our main inspiration was to showcase our company as one of the best and to clearly demonstrate that British firms are capable of achieving significant success through innovation and international trade. We have always aspired to achieve the highest levels of excellence and we felt that the awards process would be the ideal benchmark to measure our progress. The detailed process of entering facilitates a comprehensive and structured review of our company, highlighting our successes whilst developing strategies to help address future growth opportunities. Additionally, the awards are a wonderful mechanism to promote entrepreneurship, innovation, and international trade, all of which are vital to help boost the British economy. Next slide, please. To win a Queen's Award undoubtedly has an extremely significant impact, both externally to clients, partners, and advisors, and internally for the company. The awards have undoubtedly strengthened relationships with existing clients, also prompting excellent feedback and helping secure new business opportunities. Winning the awards has definitely had a very positive impact upon the team in terms of additional commitment, increased personal satisfaction, immense pride, significant confidence, further innovation, and motivation with the desire to achieve even more success. We started to assess new strategies that should help us reach further beyond the 60 plus countries that we currently export to. We are striving to be even more innovative in our solutions and expanding our portfolio of services. A reflection of this is that in a three year period since we won our first Queen's Awards, our overseas sales increased 160% and sales to the US increased 780%. A definite case of enhanced international trade driven by innovation and confidence. Next slide, please. ICC Solutions now has a firm objective of helping to further enhance British exporting. Winning our third Queen's Award last year resulted in a strong desire to encourage other people to embrace the opportunities offered by international trade. We felt confident that our skills and experience could add value to others. I'd like to share an experience with you that clearly demonstrates resources currently available can be utilized to provide a comprehensive understanding of international trade and also reflects an appetite for exporting. In partnership with the Duke of Edinburgh's awards team, known as the DOV, last September, we launched an initiative called Exporting Excellence. This is intended to ignite a passion for export in young people and inspire them with the confidence that they can embrace opportunities to do business within the global marketplace. These young people could be the international traders of tomorrow, ensuring Britain thrives as a powerful global trading nation. Next slide, please. 
The Exporting Excellence pilot consisted of six schools from over the north of England undertaking a framework of export education over a 10-week period, culminating in a final that was held in Cheshire in January. At the final, each school was represented by a team of up to five young people aged 13 to 14. Each team had an exhibition area to display the evidence of exporting research and delivered a 15-minute presentation on their chosen product or service and their selected country to export to. The pilot and the final were a huge success and incredibly well received. The DOV announced that exporting will now be offered as an option on the skills section of the DOV award. This means that each year, 300,000 young people will be afforded the opportunity to receive education, training, and mentoring on international trade. The enthusiasm, commitment, and capabilities demonstrated by all participants in the final was truly inspirational. Simply put, the young people were amazing. The teams were assessed based on key areas of international trade, such as foreign currency, markets and marketing, logistics and transport, cost and margin, and culture, selling, and ethical issues. Importantly, these comprehensive export projects were completed using predominantly existing online resources with very limited additional mentoring. If these young people can excel using these resources, so can others. Next slide, please. Here, you can see the impact of exporting excellence, the joy of the winning team. Next slide, please, Will. Now, let's look at some key exporting activities to consider. Prepare the way. It's essential to research the market that you aim to export to. Know your target customers and know your competitors. Comprehensive country guides are available online to assist. Are you ready for the opportunity? Is there a demand for your product, service, and what are your USPs? Identify the benefits to your business and review your capabilities, identifying areas where additional support may be required. Make your plan. Ensure you understand customs requirements, legal obligations such as local laws, product standards, and regulations. Protect your intellectual property. Write your export plan, defining the detail on successfully penetrating your market. Close the deal. Ensure you have sufficient finances to fund your international activity. UK Export Finance can help with specialist support and advice. Do you need to modify your product or service to fully address the requirements within the new market? Do you understand the preferences of the customers in that market? How will you sell? Using distributors or direct? And have you assessed logistics? Do business and grow. Agree acceptable payment terms and methods to ensure you are paid on time. Consider protecting your business with credit insurance. Maximize opportunities with fluctuating exchange rates. Look after your clients with the same level of detail as if they were based in the UK and ensure you monitor the market for political, social, economic, and technological changes which may make a difference to how you do business. Next slide, please, Will. There's some truly wonderful resources available online and available now to help educate and support your export journeys. A selection of these websites are listed here. To emphasize, these were used by the young people for the DOV Exporting Excellence Initiative, making great use of the experts supporting export. Next slide, please. Always believe in what you can achieve and remain committed to it. ICC Solutions started with nothing, just the power of an idea. Now we export to over 60 countries, we've won four Queen's Awards for Enterprise, and gained a global reputation for delivering excellence. This has been achieved through our ongoing commitment to international trade combined with technological innovation with an appetite for success. We've always found it essential to show flexibility to adapt to changing market conditions and customer requirements, being as dynamic as possible. Our ethos has always been to deliver excellent products and services combined with exceptional customer service, whatever the location. And next slide is the final one. Thank you, Will. 
thank you very much and uh, enjoy exporting. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Really, really inspiring message. And definitely, uh, if the kids can do it, then why can't everyone else sort of thing? Um, so on that note, over to Arno to talk about Merci Mama. Thank you very much, Will. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Arno, um, and I run, uh, founded and run um, Merci Mama. Although I'm French and the, the brand name is French, we are a London-based business. Um, and so we started our, our exports from uh, from the UK. Uh, what we do, we do, we design and manufacture personalized gifts, uh, mainly jewelry. So we would uh, engrave names of children on necklaces or, or cufflinks or bracelets, uh, mainly targeted to mums, but we also um, have a number of men uh, in our uh, client base. Um, and everything is done by us from, from A to Z in, in the process. Um, What's our USP is basically that we are super focused on our clients, making sure that they are uh, satisfied, uh, not only by the products that they get, but also by the whole experience of browsing on our website, having fast delivery, having a good uh, customer uh, service team if there are any issues. Uh, and that, help, uh, that has helped us grow, uh, not only to retain existing clients, but also to spread uh, through word of mouth and then through uh, social media to have a good audience. Next slide, please. Um, there's, there are just a few numbers. Um, I think it's quite different from uh, ICC solutions, which is great because um, we are B2C, so we sell directly to our end, end consumers. Um, we are online, uh, mainly. Uh, we sell in a few uh, department stores, but mainly online. Uh, and we're small. Uh, we cre we um, started the business 10 years ago. Uh, we do uh, 3 million of turnover. Um, and we have 25 employees. Until 2013, almost everything was uh, UK uh, only. Um, only 8% of our sales were abroad. Uh, our website was a .co.uk. We were only offering payments in pounds. Uh, everything was done from London. Uh, and we started shifting that uh, in 2014, trying to develop our business. Uh, and as you can tell from uh, the bottom right of the, the slide, uh, now the UK accounts for uh, just half of, of our business, not because the UK has gone down, because it has in actually increased, uh, but because uh, our exports uh, have really boomed and helped us develop the business. And it, it, is, it is continuing to do so. Um, we are a self-funded family business, uh, which is quite rare in the, in the tech world where people tend to uh, raise lots of money uh, and basically my message is whatever your size, whatever you're doing, uh, wherever you're from, uh, there is clearly an opportunity to set up a business, grow, and, and export is definitely an option. Uh, and you don't have to be big to, to try thinking about exports. Uh, next slide, please. Um, applying for the Queen's Award. Um, we applied two years ago, uh, summer 2015, um, and once again, my message is you, you don't have to use an external uh, agency to, um, to, to make your application for the Queen's Award. Um, some people told us that we should, that we had no chance to, to win it without uh, going through an external agency. That, that's not right. Uh, we, did our, we did it ourselves. It took lots of time, so be aware of that. Uh, and it took us lots of time. And then when we were about to submit, we realized that uh, we were not fulfilling one of the three criteria. Uh, which was quite embarrassing, but anyway, we had done it, so uh, we, we continued to, to apply. And we had very constructive feedback from the Queen's Award Office um, as to not only, well, clearly that year we didn't win because we are not fulfilling all the criteria, but also they gave us great feedback in terms of um, what our application should look like the following year to get a chance to win. Uh, one of the feedback, for instance, was that we should insist a lot more on our strategy, on what we should do, uh, on, on what we did uh, to, um, to increase exports, that it was not just chance or not just because we had um, a great celebrity wearing our necklace that, that basically the business boomed, but make sure that we're explaining the whole strategy and the action plan uh, um, that we had set up to, um, to develop exports. Uh, so that's what we did uh, last summer uh, when we did our application and we won the award uh, in April this year. Next slide, please. And, and um, so this is me and my wife uh, uh, meeting the Queen at uh, Buckingham Palace uh, a few weeks ago. Um, 
the reception was absolutely, absolutely amazing. Uh, getting to meet the Queen, to discuss our business with her, uh, getting to Buckingham Palace is obviously a huge thing uh, for anyone, uh, but obviously a huge thing for, for us as uh, um, immigrants to the UK. Um, and uh, it, it was a huge honor and we're very humbled by that. Um, at the same time, um, and I think it goes a bit to uh, what uh, ICC was saying before, uh, we organized uh, a summer party with the Hood team and the impact of the Queen's Award internally has been absolutely massive. Um, and I think we will need to see in a few years time what, what um, when we have uh, hindsight on, on the Queen's Award, the real impact, what the real, real impact has been. But it has been huge in terms of motivation, in terms of recruitment, in terms of um, uh, just positive attitude uh, and and yeah, thinking that this is just one more milestone in our development. Um, and in terms of the reception, so two persons from, from your company would get to meet the Queen at uh, Buckingham Palace, but there is also a Lord Lieutenant who come to, the, to your office. And this is also um, a great opportunity uh, to celebrate. Um, and, um, and so basically the Lord Lieutenant is committed by, is asked by the Queen to come and, and formally give you the, the award in your own business. Um, and then the business impact um, has been massive. Um, we are quite strong on social media. We have 130,000 uh, uh, Facebook fans. We have almost 30 um, fans on Instagram, etc. cetera. Um, and the buzz that um, we managed to create on social media, uh, thanks to the Queen's Award, has been massive. And it helped us uh, lift, uh, uplift, or increase sales um, in the UK uh, and also overseas. Um, in terms of PR, uh, it's been massive too, not really in the UK for us, uh, but it worked extremely well uh, in the US, in France, in Germany, so which are our key export countries. Uh, and there we've seen a huge uplift in sales. And I think this is just the beginning because people get to know your brands, uh, get to follow you, and I'm sure that there'll be a lot more in terms of uh, sales uplift, thanks to the Queen's Award in the coming months and years. Um, and then I talked about that HR. Uh, I think the business impact on HR has been great and will continue to be so for a number of years. Next slide, uh, which is the final one. Will, yeah. Um, will ask me to, if, if I could give a share of few tips uh, on, on exports. Um, for us, being a, a new business um, and being still relatively small, the key thing was to build our brands. Uh, so build our brands uh, in the UK, but also build, build our brands uh, abroad. Um, we we choose, chose to, to focus on a few countries uh, because I think if you want to go everywhere, then you go nowhere. Uh, so we choose to focus on France, uh, Germany, and the US. Uh, uh, and it's worked really well. Um, we, we also work with celebrities. I guess it's a bit typical to our business, but uh, we, we had um, a number of cele UK celebrities wearing our necklace, the, the biggest one being the Duchess of Cambridge. Uh, but we also had uh, the daughter of um, uh, Richard Branson and a number of others. Uh, and that has definitely helped, especially because those celebrities are truly global and they have a huge impact everywhere. Um, and then digital marketing, I mean, for us being an e-commerce, uh, clearly it's, it's, um, it's massive, uh, whether it's through uh, newsletters, uh, social media, uh, pay-per-click campaigns, uh, or retargeting. Um, and then partnerships, so we, we try to work with uh, other brands. I think it's, um, it's relatively easy, it's cost-effective, uh, and a number of brands are, are looking to, um, to work with others, do cross-marketing, do competitions on blogs, on social media, and then helps everybody grow. Um, and then my key tip really is number two, uh, in a, in, enable your website and your operations. I, I think we talked earlier about uh, customs and duties, we talked earlier about payments, uh, but also it, I think it, you need to think through the, the whole value chain, uh, uh, think through your customer service, the way your website is designed, um, don't assume that because somebody speaks well English that it's uh, necessarily the best person for you to talk to. Um, and so ha having a, a native French or a very good French speaker when you go to France or German or Sp Spanish to, to, to your target countries is very important. Um, um, local currencies, 
have local terms and conditions, um, etc. I mean, it seems very obvious and very basic, uh, but it's, it's, it is very important. Obviously, customs, logistics, etc., are, are equally important. But my message is really try and think uh, about uh, your, the whole experience uh, that your customer will have um, dealing with you. Um, and then for us online, there are obviously a number of, um, of marketplaces that we can try to go to, established players. Uh, for others, it might be uh, distributors, it might be agents uh, that are there that can help you get a foot into a market. And then you establish your brand and you develop it uh, directly with your clients. And that's it for me. Uh, you have my uh, picture and my email address on the following slides. Don't hesitate to get in touch with me if you want further details. Over to you, Will. Cool. Thank you, Arno. Um, we've got a lovely company. And um, really great to hear about the journey you've been on as well in terms of applying once and applying again and getting better like the second time. So, so really good. Good story there. I was going to hand over quickly to Craig from the Queen's Awards team, who's going to give a little bit more information about the Queen's Awards. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'm, I'm Craig Watts, and I head up the, the Queen's Awards office in the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. And we essentially um, administer the, the awards scheme on behalf of the, of the Palace and the Queen. Um, just very briefly, not, you may well know this before already, but um, you know we, we believe that the Queen's Awards are the UK's most prestigious Business awards they are awarded by the Queen um, on an annual basis on the 21st of April, and they really are uh, sort of there to reward outstanding UK businesses. And for me, it was great to hear how positive the, the impact is, uh, winning a Queen's Award has been for, for both Dave and Arno. Because to me, it's about rewarding great businesses for what they've done, but also really to give those businesses a real boost uh, in the future in terms of how they uh, grow and grow their their kind of overseas sales. Uh, we really do believe having the, the Queen's Award does does help. Um, I mean, you, you heard some of the benefits there from Dave and Arnold, but we, we constantly get told from previous winners that it, it does help to get your business noticed, so that the Queen's Awards emblem, which you, you see on the slide there, um, each winner is, um, is permitted to use that emblem on their marketing material and their products for five years after award. Um, and the, the sort of um, the impact of that, and particularly overseas markets, uh, we are told is is really really positive. Um, the guys all also touched on the, the sort of boost to staff morale that, that can come from winning awards, um, but also increases in, in sales and, and growth overseas. And there is some research that the University of Strathclyde are carrying out um, and should be published uh, shortly. Um, but they found that um, for international trade category winners um, during between the years of 2012 and 2015. 73% um, 70, of those winners directly attributed uh, increased sales after that, that award. Um, they, they directly attributed decreased sales to winning a Queen's Award. So it really did have a, a tangible impact on their business. Um, in terms of the categories, so uh, there are four categories um, for Queen's Award um, to be awarded in. Um, innovation, international trade, sustainable development and promoting opportunity. Uh, and the promoting opportunity category is new um, for this year just gone, uh, and that's about uh, companies who've got really good social mobility programs uh, within their within their companies. Um, so maybe if, if I just uh, go to the next slide, which is about how to enter. Um, so this is a great time to be speaking to you all. That we're almost at the point of two weeks until the the application window closes. Uh, so that closes at, at noon on uh, Friday the first of September. So not not too far off, and as um, I think, as Arnold said, it, it, it isn't a, a quick um, application to fill out. It's not something you can sit and, and do in half an hour or a couple of hours. It, it is quite detailed. Um, it, we say it takes kind of up to uh, around 40 hours or, or more to do, um, and that will vary by company. But, but that really is because we, we do, um, you know, it is the UK's most prestigious um, award, uh, and it needs to, you know, the, the rigour that goes into that, that sort of um, application process and the... Uh, and the judging process is what helps to, to kind of um, differentiate that from other other awards. Um, the process, uh, the application is free, um, so there's no there's no charge for that. And almost any UK business can enter. Um, we do have some eligibility criteria, and um, Arnold might be be pleased to know that there is a new process. So when you you first log onto the system, there is a short uh, eligibility questionnaire that you can you can complete. Uh, that should take around 10 minutes, and that will tell you if you if you meet the key um, eligibility criteria. So 
um, you can find out fairly quickly if it is award, an award that you can apply for. Um, in terms of the, the criteria, I mean, it, it is, uh, like I say, it's open to, to the vast majority of UK businesses. Um, you have to file your, your tax returns with uh, the HMRC. Um, you have to have at least two full-time uh, UK employees. Um, you have to be based in, in the UK. Um, and then there's obviously varying criteria for the, the other categories, um, which, uh, which are, are set out on the website uh, where you, you go to. Uh, you could to apply, and I think just in general, I think um, again Arnold touched on it in terms of uh, tips on how to how to write your application. I think that the key thing, uh, or one of the key things, is, is as he said around um, you know talking about your strategy, talking, telling the, the assessors is behind the numbers. So actually, what was your strategy for particularly overseas sales and international growth, um, and and how did you get there, uh, and that will help them to really understand um, how you've achieved. Uh, what you've achieved over the, the past few years. I think that that's sort of uh, the key things I want to say, Will, so um, I'll hand back to you. Many thanks, Craig. Um, yeah, and I definitely, um, definitely recommend businesses who are, who are eligible to, to apply. It's a really great, great award and um, very prestigious, as, as Craig says. We're going to open the floor now to questions. Um, and the first one we've had is in from Anwar. Who's, and this question for Sam, just around UKF, and he's asked um, if there's any service-based examples he can give of some of the companies UKF applies with. So, Sam. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm muted. Yeah. William, sorry, we, we, we lost you at the beginning of your question. Could you repeat that? Yeah, sure. So, um, it's a question from Anwar, and he's just asked if you have any examples around service businesses who UK Export Finance have worked with before. Yeah, um, well, examples that come off the top of my head, for example, are um, working on refineries, um, in particular in the oil and gas sector. Essentially, we sort of some of the bigger players, but um, Jacobs, Amec, Foster Wheeler. Uh, Mott McDonald, uh, for example, we would look to support them in terms of um, doing feed studies, so that's uh, engineering studies. Uh, we're looking and have worked with architects in the past to obviously provide detailed designs. Um, in fact, a, a lot of our business uh, is service support because, of course, that's where a large share of the UK exports uh, go to, but in terms of services, we can we can support architects, engineers, um, designers, um, even to some extent professional services firms. So uh, please don't be afraid of of looking for our support where you, where you are a services provider. Thank you, thank you, Sam. Um, so next question I'm going to ask is for um, for Craig actually, um, and it's it's from Lucy who asks um, who are the judges for the Greens Awards. Um, so we've got a, a sort of a, a number of uh, steps we go through. So we have some independent assessors who um, do the initial assessment. So they're uh, that we we we, um, we employ to do the initial assessment against the criteria, and they are kind of experts in those fields. And then we have um, judging panels um, uh, who are primarily made up of uh, both uh, government and external um, sort of leading figures in those those fields. So um, each of those judging panels is is chaired by the relevant permanent secretary from the, the government department most uh, most aligned with that. So for international trade, it is uh, the permanent secretary of uh, Department of International Trade. Um, and and we, we invite, sort of, uh, I mean, we've actually got uh, one of the Institute of Experts, uh, Wesley Bachelors, on, on that, that panel. So we have various people, uh, both internal and external, on that panel. And then it goes up through um, uh, the Prime Minister and the Queen. So it, it goes, uh, has various, various levels of, of, um, of assessment uh, all the way up to the Queen signing off at the end. Wow, oh, that's, really, um, that's definitely the, the royal sign of approved, the royal seal of approved, approval, I guess. Um, so the next question is um, another one for Sam, um, and it's from Adrian, who's asked about what so kind of support UKF has for smaller businesses, in particular ones who earn some earning and kind of over a million sort of contracts kind of what, what sort of work is UKX for financing with SMEs or what support is there in the, in the landscape? Um, well in fact a large a large share of our business um, 
just by numbers is, is, is with SMEs. There's no real minimum value we would look at. Um, but I, I think, you know, I, before I just want to temper some extent because obviously we get uh, approached by startups and it's never an absolute no to startups. But I think a rule of thumb is that if a bank would lend to the SME, uh, then, then we would lend to the SME. I know there's been some disappointment in the past with, you know, very, very early stage startups. We're, we're not a grant provider. Uh, we're not an aid provider. We don't invest equity. We, we essentially are, um, we, we act like a bank, although obviously we have more, more risk than a bank. But the short answer question is actually by numbers, the bulk of our support does go to, to SMEs. And you, and you can see that in our, in our annual report, which we released in the last month or so on our website, um, including some of the names of the SMEs that we've supported. Thank you, Sam. Um, I've got a couple of questions which might be good for the case studies, actually, particularly this one for Arno. Um, and it's around kind of how, how were Mercy Mama able to use the social media to, to drive kind of um, sales kind of following the Queen's Awards? But was there any, any advice you can give in terms of social media and how to use it internationally? Um, so on social media, we have um, different, uh, let's talk to, uh, about Facebook. So we have a, a UK Facebook page and then a German one, a French one and a US one. So on each of those platforms, we uh, posted uh, pictures, um, uh, some explanations on, on what, what we did. Um, and, and then there was just huge um, engagement. And, and as you know, on social media, the more engagement you have, the more reach you have. Um, and people were very joyful for us, asking questions, uh, congratulating us. Um, and I think just, it was very natural. Uh, I think because the Queen's Awards uh, is, is so prestigious, getting to meet the Queen is so unique. Uh, I think the, the engagement was very natural, very genuine, and that's basically the best on social media when, uh, uh, when it works like that. Um, and we're also um, active on Instagram, uh, and, and it works extremely well, a bit less on Twitter because we're not very focused on Twitter ourselves. Uh, but we did nothing really extraordinary, just um, reacting the news, uh, having nice um, pictures and nice artworks and just, yeah. So it's, yeah, the human touch always works best really with, with social media. Um, yes. A question now, which I'm gonna to put to, to Dave first, it's, it's a bit more of a general exporting question, but it's from Balat and he's asked, what is the best, most effective way to connect with the target audience in a new marketplace um, as part of a, an entry plan into a region? Uh, do you have any advice for that, Dave? Yeah, and uh, that's a good question. Uh, we've always found um, uh, trade fairs uh, highly successful. And of course, there's um, superb support with the, the UK organizations of uh, trade missions as well. And these can be very focused and targeted, ensuring that you're connected with the, with the best uh, players within that market. Uh, we've also had a specific strategy because we're involved with the payments industry. We tend to target um, either a, a national payment scheme or one of the large banks uh, as, a, as an opener. And then these are uh, typically because they'll be working, if it's a payment scheme, they'll be associated with all the banks. So if it's a bank, they'll be working with the merchants, the retailers. So that is a, a good avenue for us. But obviously, you know, that's going to change depending on your line of business. But uh, it's something that we're actually actively pursuing at the moment, because although we export to over 60 countries, we want to export to a lot more. So we're actually facing some of these challenges at the moment as to how we can get into some of these new markets. So, um, yeah, it's a very exciting time for us as well. Thank you, Dave. Very good answer. Um, I'm going to ask one last question as we're running out of time. Um, this is for Craig. Um, and it's just about, can you give a, an overview of some of the other companies who, who have won the Queen's Awards? We've had two very diverse companies today. So kind of, can you give a quick kind of, overview of the breadth and, and um, types of company which we have won before. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we and it is a really wide range. So we have a number of SMEs who win. So, um, you know, we had, for example, five companies this year who won in, in two, um, uh, one, sort of two categories. Uh, one of them is Master Plaster, um, who, um, who uh, won both innovation and international trade. 
Um, but we have we have a whole, a whole load uh, of different sized companies. So we had uh, a number of um, uh, sort of uh, large banks or, or um, uh, sort of legal chambers uh, this year for social mobility. Um, uh, you know, companies who are doing great things and in, in, in bringing in people from sort of non-traditional backgrounds into into their their companies um, under the sustainable development um, uh, sort of uh, category. We had um, um, City Legacy who um, who did the uh, the Athletes Village for the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, uh, and, and really sort of uh, pushed the boundaries on what uh, on sort of building uh, sort of sustainable um, practices in, into construction. Um, we had a, um, a, a company that, that um, invented a, a new innovative way of, of putting non-slip um, coverings onto onto showers and baths. Who won for innovation and um, at the at the, the Buckingham Palace reception, brought some samples to show to the, the Queen. Um, I guess in the assumption that she has lots of bathrooms in the palace and they might get some business. So it's a really sort of wide range of, of companies. Um, Jellycat Toys, uh, one for international trade. Um, you know, there was a, a real a real range. I think uh, you know across all sectors and all sizes. So um, you know, I think really encourage people to have a look at the categories because there is really uh, you know. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't focus on one sector at all. It's about what you're doing in your company. Um, so the uh, you know do do take a look and see what you um, if you qualify. Great. Uh, thank you, Craig. And I think on that note, um, we're probably going to start wrapping up. So thank you once again to Sam, Dave, Arno, and Craig for being with us today. And I hope everyone has found today's session useful and maybe even a little inspiring as well. If you have any further questions about the Queen's Awards, these are the people to contact here. Um, so please have a look at those contact details. As mentioned earlier, the awards are open to all businesses and you have until September 1st to apply. So let's have that there for a couple of seconds. We are once again running our, our own export action plan competition this autumn. You can submit your strategy for Brexit to us by September 29th and you can win £3,000 cash and more prizes. The final is taking place at the Swiss Embassy on November 2nd and that will, I'm sure, be a fantastic event, I'm very much certain. The Institute are also running plenty of great events and courses this autumn. We were delighted recently to announce that Her Royal Highness Princess Anne will be attending the Queen's Award Dinner in September. While Nick October, there will be another World Trade Summit in London featuring thought leadership around Brexit and UK trade from a great lineup of speakers. Our next webinar is on September 13th, and that's on international trade shows and how to fit them into your strategic plans for international growth. At the end of September, we're also running a webinar with the UK ASEAN Business Council on how to get started selling into the Southeast Asia region. So, as you can see, there's plenty to get involved in this autumn. And as always, please take our exit survey to let us know what you thought of the webinar today and to give us any suggestions for improvements or future topics. That's all from us for now. Goodbye. <laughs>